Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, The Lost Chevalier, and today we're gonna create the easiest empire to play with, having no DLC enabled. So if you just have the game, this should be the best empire for you to play with. So what we're gonna do is new game. As we can see, all of them are disabled. There we go, very well. And we're gonna go to create new empire, select the empire, and like I said before, there we go. Like I said before in my previous videos about this subject, you can pick whatever you want, but this is kind of like the easiest one you can get for a first run, for your ever first run. So what we're gonna do is just choose the portrait that you most love, that you more love. In my case, it's this one over here because I really love them. Well, actually, I actually love all of, all of the all of the insectoid ones, but this one is the best. <laughs> so freaking like venerable, I love it. After that, well, species name, put whatever you want. Gender, choose whatever you want. Biography, write something beautiful. And then, well, name, go for whatever you like. Luckily, you have a lot of them. So, just choose the one you like the most. In my case, I will say, where is my beloved... No, no, I mean, Anthropoid. Here we go, this one over here. Was this one? No, this one. Eh. Mm, actually, I love them all. Uh, they're so weird. I love this one the most. Yeah, yeah. And the ship prefix, choose whatever you want. It will be called like this. ISAs and all of that. Sounds good. Enough. Now, traits. This is the most important thing of all. First come first. First trait that you want to pick if you want like an easy run is intelligent. It's one of the... It's a no-brainer. Having more research equals to having more, pow to having more power. More research, more power. Power equals research. I'm fleet. But that's a thing for another video. But first, research. This is all modifiers, and you want this because you will have a 10% of everything. And it's the best. Then you want to have rap, rap, rapid breathers, so you can have a lot of pops quickly. For that, I will go for... let me see... Um, yeah, I will say weak and sedentary. Those are two are very good. Worker power survival minus 2.5% is not that bad. The army damage, though, is kind of big, but... You usually just create like a hundred armies and send them to battle, so... It doesn't really matter at all. So pick that one. And then just go for Deviants. Deviants is the best. It's free. <laughs> so far the game doesn't have a really like a like a real like, you know, important stuff with government ethics so far. Maybe the next update will change that. Not the update that is coming right now, uh, the next next week, I believe. No, not, not that one. The, the one after that. The one that is going to be with a DLC. Probably will change all of this because I'm pretty sure it's going to be internal politics. I might be wrong. I hope I'm not. But Deviance is a no-brainer. So just pick it up. And Solitary too. Now that I think about it, it's a no-brainer. Solitary... Uh, well, you can exchange weak with Solitary now that I think about it. Because housing really, you will have no problem. Just when you start the game, just you will just see what I mean in other videos about that. So I think actually... Well, let's, let's leave it with weak actually. And after that, you want, like I say... Rape rapid readers. Just put it put that put this bad boy here for good measure. That's a really good species over here. Intelligent, weak, deviant, but rapid readers. You will have a really really strong world with this one. Like I say, worker pop resource output minus two point five point five point five percent is not that bad. Really not that bad. You can actually like like outweigh this with just one tech that you get at the beginning of the game, so just don't worry about it. That is exoskeletons. So go next. Uh, the planet class, just choose whatever you feel uh, fits uh, your, your species, whatever you want. I always like the desert one because I love, I love that idea. Though I don't like heat, I don't like, I don't like hot days. I really like the, the freaking idea of the desert. So we're gonna keep that one over here. Um, city appearance, just whatever you like. And then, well, Ori. This is your first time playing. Pick Prosperous Unification. With no DLC available, by the way. Prosperous Unification. There is just... It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Going for Lost Colony is not the best. This one, on the other hand, will have more pops on this on the beginning. A generation. An agriculture district. Prosperous Unification. Planetary, planetary Modification. And then you will have the research option warranty of Planetary Unification. Which is really good. So, pick that one up. Now for the ethics. The ethics is really important. I will say you should go for your first playthrough so you can like understand the game better. I will say to keep away from this. All of this. Authority, militarist, and xenophobe. Just and pacifist too. 
Keep away from all of this. All of these are, 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 your, are a problem, actually, for, for beginners. So. Don't go for authoritarian if you want to start with it. Look at this. If I even pick authoritarian ethics, I'm already, like, negating the negative effect of the weak trait because of the worker pop resource output plus 5%. So, 2.5% extra. And it's good. I will say the, the best will to have. So, you are not declared war immediately. I will say this one is the one. Fanatic Sinophile is the best one of them all, in the beginning at least. <clears throat> and after that I would recommend either Materialist or a Spiritualist. The reason why Materialist is because of the robot upkeep and the research speed. And the beautiful Spiritualist is because of the monthly unity. It's all about what you want to do. It is a flavor thing, you can choose whichever you want. I would recommend first go for Materialist because, like I say, it actually synergizes with the intelligent trait. So you will have like a a big research going on. This one is for diplomatic reasons, so nobody will actually go down and hunt you down so easily. For example, if you are fanatic xenophobe, everybody will hate you from the very beginning. So it's better this one. Plus available envoys, so you can actually like placate the most vicious neighbors that you have if you don't have a military yet. Then for authority, I would say go either imperial or oligarchy. Democratic governments are good and all. I like the, the, the empire effects. It's really kind of cool. I like it. The only problem, though, is that... Well, you might end up with a leader that is not necessarily the best for you. Same with the oligarchy, on the other hand. Not that bad. Not that bad at all. At all, indeed. Because of the console experience gain, the edicts found from the ruler, and the effect, effective console skill, which is not that bad at all. So I would say just go for... Oligarchy or dictatorial. Dictatorial is kind of cool too because resources from capital. It's kind of cool. And then empire, level size minus one. Not that good, I will say, but you can actually survive that. And then the ruler, well, power projection, which is good, and it expands. This is uh, power projection is something that you get with a bigger fleet. So I will say just go for. Well, you can actually go for whatever you want, but the best one is oligarchy. If you, if you believe me or not, <laughs> the best one is oligarchy indeed. Because you can get really good leaders and it, it's kind of like a no-brainer. You will not be like bothered every 10 years for an election. Only every 20 or when the leader dies. Now, for civics, if it's your first time and we have all of this, technocracy is your first thing to pick because of the freaking, you know, it's really good. It's really good. Just pick technocracy. First thing ever. Just pick technocracy. It's really good. And after that, I will say to go. Let me see. Uh, no, this one is not necessarily the one that we need. Corvette system is kind of cool. It's, it's really cool, actually. I will say Corvette system will be good. Although, moving pops around, you might not know exactly how to do it yet. But pop growth from immigration is a big plus. <laughs> a big, big plus. Maybe I just go for uh, efficient bureaucracy. That's actually kind of cool, I will say. Indeed. Environmentalist is really cool for a standpoint of roleplay, but... Uh, it's like a little tricky to actually like, you know, <laughs> know where to put them down and all of that. It's really cool indeed, but at the same time it's like, ooh, damn it. <laughs> a little extra, extra clicking you know, over here and over that. I would say go for a free Haven. This is actually the best. Yeah, especially if you're going to have a lot of friends. So, oh, meritocracy too. Especially pop resources. Actually, no, go for meritocracy. That's the best. Go for technocracy and meritocracy. Yeah, now. Nah. Immediately, immediately click on my head. Technocracy, meritocracy, good combo, indeed. You will have like a really, 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 really powerful empire, if you believe it or not. So, go with fanatic xenophiles, xenophiles and not everyone hates you at the beginning, unless you're surrounded by, by, by horrible monsters. And materialist, so you will be able to have robots and other things, is the best. So go next, empire name, just pick whatever you like. Flag, pick whatever you like. It merely jump off the off the break area on a while. Let's keep it this way. Ship appearance, pick whatever you like. I'll recommend go for the with the flow of your thing. So this yeah, is this one. Now the ruler, pick whatever you want. Director general is okay. Biography, whatever you want. Male or female, whatever you want. This, is, this will not change unless you have a humanoid portrait. race. And the, ru the ruler. I will say the best thing of the ruler is to have either mine and rush. Charisma not necessarily. Logistic understanding, eh, more or less, and I for talent. I for talent is good, but for now I go for mining rush. Although this is only for official, then you have 
scientist. Come on, lead organizer. Hostilities, not, not a bad. Charisma, logistic thing. I for talent too. You have scientists. Scientists have a spark of genius. Mining rush, all of this. I will say in this particular world with the you know the the, the the science directory and all of that, basically materialist, I will say spark of genius. You will basically have like you will be a rocket, you'll be doing science left and right. This is the world I found, at least at a glance, the most easy to control in your very first game. Because like I say, weak, you get it out with the first tech you ever will have, that is exoskeletons. I'm going to show you that immediately because we're going to delve in the beginning of the game too. Intelligence, so you have basically all the research. Deviance, doesn't matter. Rapid breathers, really good. Plus, remember this, during the game you will have the gene modding tool, basically you will be able to modify your species, so you will be able to remove this. Now, Fanatic Xenophile, like I say, really good, especially for the no refugee, uh, they cannot use that, so you will have refugees coming if something horrible happened in the galaxy. And the Materialist, Meritocracy and Technocracy, really good together. Perfect, done. This is your empire, pick it up. Now, here you are in your galaxy, depending on your computer you want to have medium, small or tiny stars, depending how good your computer is at handling big simulations. Mine is really good at handling medium. I could totally do a huge uh, freaking galaxy if I want, but having a medium is the best, actually. It's like the, the default. The galaxy shape is a shame that we don't have a randomizer on this, but I will say just pick spiral with two arms, I will say, especially for medium. Spiral with two arms is really good. And it will help you, like, have blocks of power going around in the galaxy. Elliptical is really good, too. It's more like a mesh, like a, like a freaking, like a disc. And everybody can go everywhere. I always forget to change this every time I play, because I really love a randomizer about this. But Spiral to Arms is really good for that. Then you have Ring, that is really good. Baron, Spiral, Spiral. They are super weird. All of the other ones are really weird, but pretty cool. I would say Spiral to Arms, really good. AI Empires, leave it like this. Advanced AIs. Okay, listen up. <laughs> listen up. Advanced AIs can be really good for your storytelling, okay? These are like the empires that went to the star before you. So they are a little bigger at the beginning, but you can really catch up with them really fast. It's not necessarily like they are super advanced. They just have, they have a couple of colonies and nothing else, more or less sometimes. So nothing out of the ordinary. It's just like a couple of empires that are good. And then Fallen Empires, leave it at 2. Leave it at 2. Although in your first playthrough, you might want to have this at 0. I would recommend having it at 2. Because of the final crisis. For the crisis, crisis. The final crisis is the most important thing, by the way. So, Fallen Empires. Leave it at 2. One of them might come out to help you out in the end of the game. If everything goes to jet shit. Maybe not. Maybe they will. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, you might be surrounded by the spiritualist and the xenophobe, in which case you're screwed. <laughs> but maybe you will have the materialist and the xenophiles, the uh, fallen empires, that will actually help you out in the end. <laughs> the other two will not, the xenophobe especially. The xenophobe is just like, eh, I don't care. <laughs> and even if, if they wake up, they're gonna be like, I'm gonna conquer you all. I'm gonna purge the galaxy and then save it for myself. <laughs> That is their motto and their, and their way of thinking. Technology cost, strategy cost, tradition cost. All of these leave it at plus one. It's your first time playing. You don't want to play. You don't want to play with any of this. Habitat rewards, leave it like this. Do not touch it. Preface doesn't lie in precipitous. Leave it like this. Price and strength, leave it at the at the number that it says because look at this. When you go on medium, it's zero point small. It's zero point seventy five, zero point five, and it goes up as long as you do this. See. I will say, leave it a plus or one plus. It will be fun, trust me. When the time comes, it will be fun. Then, Christmas type. Just leave it at random. First time you're playing, you have no idea which they are. Do not spoil yourself going over here. <laughs> leave it at random and enjoy the game. Mid game start year, leave it at 200. End game, 400. And victory year, 500. Victory year is not necessarily the year the game uh, should end. You can actually end it earlier if you want. You are playing. You see that the game is not going anywhere because all the things are already in place. Like all the pieces are in the right spot and the thing is done. You can actually stop playing, for example, in 200, 450, or 75, or 
even 20, depending on how good you were. Or how screwed the galaxy is. And, well, victory cheer, just leave it in 2500. Plus, there is no winner. <laughs> okay? This is, this, is, this is completely stupid. I don't know why they keep it. The Empire that has the highest score will be declared the winner. There are no winners in Stellaris, okay? <laughs> just get that out of the way. There are no winners. The, the game has no winners. The game is a sandbox. This, this thing is just like here because they forgot to take it out. I don't know, man. They just want to keep that idea of this is a forex and not a sandbox. So l let's let the devs have their fun. Um, okay. Um, no, uh, if, uh, of course, if there is an endgame crisis or a war in heaven, but war in heaven requires a DLC that is Leviathan, so don't worry about it if you don't have it. Okay, sorry, another call. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying. Either civilian or cadet is a good starting point. I will just for the sake of like, you know, examples, I will go for Ensign. It's the basically the difficulty setting that I use along with Captain. Captain is for a little more of a challenge. But Ensign is really good. Everybody will be playing the same game as you. Scale and difficulty, leave it off. Do not touch this. Do not do it. Ah, uh, difficulty adjusted, modify I have modifiers. This is actually I never try it, but it sounds good on paper. Maybe I will like I will like use it in a few in the future, but nothing out of the ordinary, I will say. Nothing out of the ordinary. Sounds good actually. <laughs> uh it's actually really cool. But nothing out of the ordinary. Then difficulty adjusted technology costs, don't touch that. AI aggressiveness, leave it a normal. It's a good place to do, I will say. It's basically the default, so leave it a normal. I always play with normal. Empire Planes event. You can go for random or you can go for the classic clusters. Cluster is kinda like more or less like three empires in one sector of the galaxy, three empires in another sector of the galaxy, four empires in another sector of the galaxy, and you go like that. But random is really cool because you can have them whatever, whatever. It's really cool. Advanced neighbors, like I say. You want to have something, someone like calling some of the shots and being like a little more aggressive at the beginning, just leave it on. But if you don't want this, put it off. I always leave it on because I like the idea. But leaving it off is totally a normal option. Most per players played with advanced neighbors turn off. Turn off. I don't know why, I found them cool. Hyperlane density, leave it on. Like this. Abandoned gateways, leave it like that. Wormhole pairs, just like that. Warranty habitable worlds. Do not touch this. Do not. Not in the beginning, at least. Not in your first playthrough. Live it like this. Caravaneers. Well, it requires Mega Corp. Don't worry. I'll gaze distance start, so don't worry. Mega Corp. Logistic row ceiling. Live it like this. Do not touch this. Grow requirement scaling. Do not even touch this. Ever. Your computer might explode if you touch any of this. And the reason is simple. It changes the amount of pops that are going to be in the galaxy. A pop is something that you will see in the future. An Iron Man mode. Do you want to have a time machine? Leave it off. Do you want to play the game and just be reading a history book that just go forwards? Leave it off. Leave it on. And if you leave it on, you will have the achievements, which is actually pretty cool. But let's leave it off just because of the of the sake of, you know, showing stuff. So, all of this is cool. All of this is cool. Remember, all of these videos are for yeah, people who are just buying the game or just trying the game. So I'm not going to explain everything, what everything does. But leave it like this. It's okay. Nothing bad. It's really cool, actually. So live it, live it like this, and then just hit play, and let the galaxy generate itself and transform. So, welcome to the game. We are here. This is our place in the galaxy. Look at beautiful place. Look at this beautiful galaxy. Well, welcome to the galaxy. Welcome, 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 welcome. I will explain all of this. Well, actually, the things that are, like, important in the beginning, right? And then, we're gonna go for the other things that are, like, less important, but, like, interlap with the rest. For now, here is where we leave it. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you had a blast. I was the Lost Chevalier, signing out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. This is Stellaris. And now, we're going to start, like, playing a game. I'm, I'm not going to necessarily, like like play the game to the end well i might actually play the game to the end from the beginning to the end but you will not see everything this is just exemplary so you can understand how the game works and well let me see if <laughs> remember what i told you about the tech well take a look at this power exoskeleton worker pop resource output plus five percent and our species over here that has the wick worker pop resource output minus two five point five percent 
immediately one of the first texts on the game negates the negative that you have. So, yep. One of the most comfortable wheels you can have is this one. Like I say, thank you very much everybody for watching. I hope you had a blast. I was the Lost Chevalier signing out and I will see you all the next week. Maybe the week after that, depending on how much work do I have to do. Well, bye bye.